The sun is shining, the bars are packed, many people are gearing up for their summer holidays. That is an oasis of normality, you might say. And very easy to forget that just three years ago, the world had become a very different, very lonely, quite deadly place. As COVID ripped through this country, Boris Johnson ordered us to do this. You must stay at home. What followed in the subsequent months were countless stories of unimaginable grief and sacrifice. Remember this little boy, Ismail, aged 13, buried alone by men in hazmat suits because his mother and siblings were ordered to self-isolate. The late queen sat masked and alone as she mourned her husband of 73 years. Boris Johnson's government plastered posters of dying COVID victims across the country with the words, look in the eyes and tell her you never bend the rules. But Boris Johnson bent the rules and most of his staff bent the rules. And regardless of what you now think of those rules with the benefit of hindsight, Boris Johnson was the man who made those rules and ordered the rest of the country to follow them. Today's report by the Privileges Committee, the result of a year-long investigation into whether he lied to Parliament about breaking his own rules, is excoriating. There's a lot in it, and the conclusions are damning. I'll come to those. But for me, the whole thing is summed up by this jaw-dropping first-hand testimony submitted as evidence by a Downing Street official. Now, I'm going to read it in full so that you can understand exactly what this report says. This person who worked at Number 10 said during the pandemic, Number 10, despite setting the rules to the country, was slow to enforce any rules in the building. The press office wine time Fridays continued throughout. Social distancing was not enforced. Mask wearing was not enforced. I once inquired to redacted name in March 2020 whether we should be wearing masks and was told the science advice was there was no point and it had very little effect on the spread of COVID. This was all part of a wider culture of not adhering to any rules. Number 10 was like an island oasis of normality. Operational notes were sent out from the security team to be mindful of the cameras outside the door, not to go out in groups and to socially distance. It was all a pantomime. One of those booze-soaked parties took place on the night before the late Queen sat alone to mourn her husband with the rest of the country banned from socialising. Staff inside the building where he lived and worked continued to party while the rest of the country and much of the world gave up everything to keep each other safe. And when the truth came out, which it always does in the end, Boris Johnson did what Boris Johnson does best. He lied. I have been repeatedly assured since these allegations emerged that there was no party and that, and that no COVID rules were broken. And that is what I have been repeatedly assured. Just a massive lie. The investigation into whether he lied was carried out by seven MPs, four of them Conservatives, who were all Brexiteers. They say he's guilty of deliberately lying to Parliament and their committee multiple times. They say he leaked details of the confidential report when it was sent to him last week. They mounted a campaign of abuse and attempted intimidation against his colleagues. And if he hadn't already resigned in disgrace, he'd be facing an unprecedented 90-day suspension. Now he faces being banned from the parliamentary estate altogether. Remember, this isn't some rogue backbench moron. This was the prime minister. And his response today, as ever, is to, is to cry conspiracy and blame everybody else. This is rubbish, he roars. A lie, a deranged conclusion, a kangaroo court, patently absurd. Boris Johnson has now become Donald Trump with a thesaurus. The fact is that Boris is a serial liar. He's been sacked from pre two previous jobs for lying. He's now lying about the people who've exposed his lies and calling them liars. This report is 108 pages long, 30,000 words of shame. And it is a shameful read. It's shameful for Boris Johnson and it's shameful for this country. Most former prime ministers go into the annals of history Boris, frankly, can get in the bin.